our core approach is, is actually quite simple. First of all, we, we try to establish a direct relationship with our fans, with our customers, with our users. Um, which means you know, we're selling direct to them, we're shipping direct to them, we're marketing direct to them, we're talking directly to them. Uh, I think that fundamentally is the same everywhere. Like we want to have a direct uh, relationship in social media, through customer support, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, secondly, uh, uh, pricing. Uh, we have consistent pricing, uh, at least so far in the markets that we've been, we've managed to have consistent pricing all of us, right? So our price is the same in every market we're in. And, you know, we have to figure out a way to deal with the local taxes, which can be different, you know, in court duties and all those things. Um, but to the extent that we can, we think that people appreciate that level of transparency and price thing is the same. Yep. You know, but fundamentally, uh, uh, our approach is to uh, talk about our products as being the highest spec, highest quality products that you can buy. Really speaking in the language of those people uh, who really care about it, uh, who are you know, young, techy, uh, you know, uh, internet savvy, uh, have no issues with buying things on e-commerce and so on and so forth. You know, that's the that's the segment of fans that we go after uh, in markets as we're arriving. Because those are the people that understand what we do. Yep. And in many cases, they actually have already heard of us. So they've been waiting uh, to be able to buy these products. So they are likely to be our most loyal fans. So we serve them first. Uh, and that's what we've been doing so far. Of course, we're just getting started. Uh, so over time, this model is going to have to evolve as we enter new segments in the market uh, and so on. But that's how we're starting. So it's a very similar start to what we did in Singapore, here in Malaysia, uh, except, of course, it's a bigger scale. So we, we're going to have to uh, work very hard on making our brand well-known uh, in this market. You know, one thing that we've done recently is we've, we've decided to stick with our simplest, uh, the simplest embodiment of our brand, right, which is me, Emma. Uh, MI.com, uh, MI is the brand of the products. That's the brand that we're going to be using increasingly to talk about our products here. Uh, you know, Xiaomi is a company. Me is the product of the brand. Um, so I think um, the, the, the biggest challenge for us is to build a brand from scratch, right? Certainly for people who haven't heard about us yet, people who are not tech enthusiasts like yourself. Um, and we're going to do that through their friends. Uh, you know, you are a tech enthusiast, but some of your friends may not be. Um, and but some of your friends may be interested in buying new phones and may be excited about you know a phone with a large screen that's super thin, that's super light, that's super fast, and that also isn't very expensive at all. In fact, uh, it's quite aggressively priced. And you'll talk to them, and then they'll buy the product. Hopefully, they'll be delighted. Uh, and then they'll tell their friends and their friends and so on and so forth. Right. So we actually truly and profoundly believe in the fact that if we make people happy, they'll help us. Uh, spread the word and you know hopefully uh, quickly grow to reaching a lot more uh, you know, people. You know, our price, pr the price closes the deal is, is, is how, I, how I like to talk about it. But the quality of our products, both the software and the hardware, is the big deal. That's the thing that makes it uh, unique. It's, 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 it's the ongoing engagement and experience that people have when they buy our products. It's not just the fact that you know, they bought something that looks good, uh, but over time they use it, they get software updates, uh, they notice that the product that they bought keeps getting better, keeps getting more features. Uh, that's the experience that sort of locks people in. Right? Uh, of course, having a very aggressive price helps close the deal, like I said, helps make that sale happen. Uh, but that is just the first step, right? Uh, ongoing enchantment and engagement is a must have. We put all of our energy, uh, all of our passion in making our fans happy and talking to them uh, directly and treating them like our friends. Um, so that goes with um, how we communicate new products, for example. Uh, our fans are always the first ones to hear about our products. You know, we never, we never uh, reveal anything to the press that we haven't already told our fans. Um, you know, and, and they appreciate that, right? Um, so uh, that's without a doubt the formula of success that we're going to be trying to replicate everywhere, in every market, and of course here in Malaysia as well. We're off to a good start, I should say. Uh, I think before the end of today, we're probably going to have 25,000 uh, fans uh, on Facebook, yep. uh, our Xiaomi Malaysia Facebook page. And I know 25,000 isn't a lot of people, but it's actually a very engaged 25,000 people. Like the number of comments that we see on each post, because we respond to every question and also it's very high, right? So the, the early stages, the, the early signs of engagement here in Malaysia are actually very good. 
So we'll support them, but they're not under warrant, right? And there's an important distinction there um, because we, we can't really um, necessarily know what the origin of these products uh, 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 is. Uh, you know, we just can't extend warranty um, to them unless you presented an official Xiaomi invoice, right? If you happen to have bought a product in China, you know, and you bought it from Xiaomi, then of course we'll support it here. Uh, but if it came in through some some channel that we're you know, that we don't authorize, then uh, we're not going to support it under warranty. We'll still service it for you, but you may have to pay a fee. Um, and that's actually very important, right? It's very important that we make sure that all incentives are aligned, uh, and that users understand that it's important for them to buy a product directly from us here. And the reason why we do this is actually to protect them, right? Uh, if they buy a product from China uh, and they and they use it here, they're going to have the wrong version of software. Right. They're not going to have the version of the operating system that supports their language, that supports local features, and that is is calibrated to work locally. Like there are all sorts of little tweaks that we have to make, at, even at the kernel level, to make sure that the phone works best here. You know, given the, the RF frequencies and you know, all the different carrier requirements in this market. So by 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 allowing you to to use a phone that's not optimized for this market, we're actually doing a disservice to you as a fan. Right, so we really make sure that all the incentives are in the right places so that people really look for the official product. So I actually think that the biggest problem with Android tablets today um, is that they're, they're not as engaging as they need to be. Um, uh, I think the software experience is not really designed with the tablet uh, use cases in mind as much. Um, and I think that's something that we're trying to change. The biggest changes that we're making um, to, to what we do for uh, MePad is actually the software. Uh, and you know, you'll see it uh, once uh, you get the chance to play with one and as the software evolves. It's, we're just starting a beta program. Uh, but a lot of things have changed. The way the home screen is laid out, the way some of the apps work, uh, and so on. Uh, some pretty big differences there, some pretty big changes that we have actually been working on for quite some time. We've been around for four years, but only now release a tablet, right? So it took us a while to get to a product that we thought was right. Um, so I mean, we'll see what, fa what our fans say when we finally launched it. Um, but we're putting a really, really strong foot forward uh, with MePad, not only from a spec hardware perspective, but it's the first uh, K1, Tegra K1 uh, uh, tablet or device, mobile device to ship in the market. It's extremely high performance, um, uh, but also on the software side. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that people will see it uh, as positively as we are seeing it. Uh, and I think it's going to be a great product. I think what we can do is try and single out the really good apps, right? And try to give people, make it easy for people to choose, uh, to download those apps that are gonna give them a fantastic experience, right? In, in, in our first market, which is mainland China, of course we control the entire app store experience because we have our own app store, right? So we're really gonna focus a lot of our own attention um, on making, uh, making it easy for people to find the best apps for tablets. But secondly, also, uh, we are working closely with NVIDIA, uh, who makes the Tiger One K1, the Tiger K1 chipset. Uh, to make sure that the best things um, are available uh, on uh, MePad. And of course, uh, NVIDIA wants it to be available on other K1 devices that will come in the future as well. But the cool thing about K1 is that it's the first uh, tablet with a PC um, chipset. Right? So porting games down from PC to a tablet has become actually a relatively trivial task um, now that they are both on sort of a, a, a parallel architecture. Um, so that actually is, is one of the key reasons why we wanted to wait until we could ship with K1. Because it's the first time that someone is shipping a tablet on a common architecture with desktop. Which for games in particular is very, very important. And of course we know how important games uh, are for tablets. Yes, you can. Uh, and I just can't give a timeline yet because we have to work on our content partnerships. Right? The, you know, Me TV is, is, is a, it's an amazing TV, but it's also an incredible content box. Right? It gives you... Uh, access, very easy access to TV shows, uh, movies, both local and, and international, um, in a really simple and easy to use fashion. We want that entire uh, philosophy, that entire platform to be available here. We don't want to just be selling a TV. Uh, we want to be selling an experience. So uh, in order to do that, we need local content partnerships. We need to, uh, you know, to have licenses for all this content. We have licenses today in China. And we need to be able to acquire these licenses in other places as well. So we're working on that. Uh, and we're also looking for local partners who can help, help us with this. Um, yes, the router is coming to Malaysia as well. Uh, it's already in the certification process, which can take a little while. Um, but our plan is definitely to have it here soon. Uh, after Malaysia, well, it's a competition. It's a competition between Philippines, Thailand, 
India um, primarily. Uh, we're trying to get all those markets ready. We'll see which one goes first.